All right. Hello, I'm Nina from Fairy God Boss. Uh, I will be the moderator today. Welcome. Uh, we're empowering the, the military spouse journey, and we have some excellent panelists to talk to today. Um, I'm going to let Daniel from Veterati speak a little bit about his organization, and then we're going to have everyone, everyone introduce themselves. Uh, Daniel. Hi, thanks so much, Nina. It's a real pleasure to be here today. I'm Daniel Rao, CEO and co-founder of Veterati, it's the world's leading digital mentorship platform for the military community. And uh, couldn't be more thrilled to be a part of this conversation. Veterati is a proud supporter of the military spouse community, and it's an honor to work with these amazing partners that you'll hear from today. So they're the true stars here, and I'll pass it over um, to our first panelist. Yes, uh, Quinn. Which I think is Shanna. Quinn. No, Quinn. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Quinn Kennedy, and I am the project manager for Microsoft's Military Spouse Technology Academy. Um, a little bit about me. I've been working on the program team for about seven months now. However, I am also an MSTA graduate and was in the pilot cohort of this program. So... I have been very fortunate to be able to, you know, experience this program firsthand and then now also fortunate to be on the other side of the coin and be on the team and to help foster the development of the program. Thanks, Quinn. Um, let's hear from Nicole next. Hey everyone, I am Nicole Schmidt, the Executive Director for the Paradigm Switch, and I just wanted to uh, give you guys a little background on what we do at the Paradigm Switch and uh, uh, bring you on the a conversation about navigating and empowering the military spouse through uh, getting their career in gear. So. The Paradigm Switch was founded as a way to empower military spouses to work from anywhere in the world. And our vision is a world where every military spouse feels economically empowered to take control of their career and prepare themselves to work anywhere in the world. And our role is to help guide you to a digital career that works for you and your family. Uh, we're a movement of military spouses that has the desire to have a career and our military lifestyle, and you don't have to have one or the other. Um, if you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, if you're looking for a job or looking to find a better job, and uh, we have advocates and people who are just interested in mentoring military spouses that they don't make the same mistakes that maybe you did. Um, we have a brand and a feeling that is special and unique to TPS. And we're really proud of that. In 2017, our president and founder, Justine Evers, was stationed with her family in Silicon Valley and realized that there was an enormous tech skills gap. And um, from that, people were leaving higher education and going into the field, but they weren't able to find employment because they didn't have the skills necessary. So the paradigm switch was born and we decided to put those skills into the hands of a demographic that needed it most, military spouses, just like you and me. And that's the unique part of the paradigm switch. It's military spouses uh, for military spouses, and that is our focus at TPS, is you, the military spouse. And we're really proud um, of that in the market where there's a lot of organizations serving. We only serve military spouses. We're available from anywhere in the world, and we're proud of that. Our partners, like Veterati, can be used anywhere that you are, and that's really important to us when we vet our partners. Another thing is that uh, we are focused on tech skills and that tech gap. So we believe that's the future of work and that's primarily where we're focused on getting you um, upskilled and into the workplace. Remote work is the coming uh, future of work. We teach you how, we guide you through not only learning more about yourself, but uh, how to get employed and how to really uh, raise the level and um, expect more for yourself, because that's really important. Don't sell yourself short. Um, I think uh, our partners here would agree that the uh, unemployment and underemployment of military spouses is a huge issue. And then also the fact that we move all the time. 
Uh, most military spouses, more than half will move more than three times in their spouse's career. And in fact, 34% move more than four times. So that's every time you move, you have to reinvent yourself. And we want you to make a career that's PCS proof. And we believe a digital career is the way to do that. Uh, remote work, freelance, and entrepreneurship are our focuses and helping you find the route that's right for you. We're interested in leveling the field for military spouse employment. Our end goal is to have you increase your income for financial stability for your family with flexible income that you can take over and over again and move with. And uh, creating that pipeline of top talent for employers to seek out is extra important to us. And that's you guys. This demographic is perfectly poised to take that on. We start out uh, with a network of spouses that are together for inspiration, collaboration, and relationship building. Uh, direct access to our program offerings is done through our Mighty Networks platform and um, network that's built there, and you can find that anywhere in the world. From there, we're really well known for our scholarships, but uh, our new digital career boot camp that's accessible from either our website or our network is what is gonna guide you through your access to not only finding out more about yourself in Switch, learning about your personality, your why, your strengths and weaknesses, and setting some smart goals for yourself, and then into Launch, where we help you find the skills, the hard skills that you need to get the career that you want and take it anywhere um, that your family might move to. Our coming program, Elevate, is gonna take that to the next level, so be sure to look out for that one. We're very excited to have that coming to you guys. Our partners like Veterati, MSAN, Instant Teams, Wise, and Grow with Google, Green Fig, and General Assembly um, are some of the uh, scholarships that we've given out to people in the past. We're really excited that we've cultivated a group of resources to um, kind of fill the gaps of what we don't do, but make sure that you have an inclusive journey as a spouse from the time you enter in as a military spouse through to a successful career with your family thriving in the military. Uh, we believe that this is the way to go and 97% of the spouses who go through our program feel more empowered to pursue and actually get the career and the results that they want. To date, we've put 130 people or more through our program that launched in August, the Digital Career Bootcamp. And throughout the lifespan of TPS, we've given out 125 scholarships to people and it's changed their lives. We're really excited about that and we hope you'll be the next one. So uh, you can head over to our website, jump into our network and enroll in our Digital Career Bootcamp. And just remember, we're here for you uh, at TPS. We're really excited to talk to you. So send us a message and, and you are the paradigm switch. So we're really excited to have you. Thank you. Thank you, Nicole. That, uh, so many exciting things happening. And um, I'm, I'm sure everyone uh, listening is excited to take a look at the site and see what else is going on. Um, thank you so much. We're going, to, we're going to move on to Shanna from the USO. Hey, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. OK, awesome. Well, um, my neck hurts because I was trying not to nod my head at every single thing Nicole was saying. Um, so thank you for, for sharing everything about the paradigm switch, Nicole. Um, my name is Shanna. I am a program management specialist here at the USO on our military family programs team. I've been at the USO almost four years now, and I've been an Army spouse for six weeks. Um, so it's really been a journey for me here, um, learning more about military spouse life, not just personally, but professionally with, with what the USO does. Um, and I'm also a very visual person, so I prepared just a few slides, but um, nothing crazy. Um, but I just wanted to share some visuals with all of you. So are you able to see those? Yes. Okay, sounds great. Um, okay, so... The USO has been around since 1941. Um, you all probably heard of our name when it comes to airports and Bob Hope and entertainment shows. Um, but since 1941, we've been supporting the men and women in our military um, in the, by keeping them connected to family, home, and country. And so we think that that mission of connection is really what the USO does best. Um, and so, as Nicole mentioned, you know, military spouses are constantly on the move, constantly reinventing themselves, building new networks every time they end up at a new duty station. 
Um, and we also know that um, now in the world of LinkedIn, you know, there are so many jobs out there in this hidden job market that are, never get posted because they're just through referrals, they're just through who you know. So what we think that we do well and where we fit in is that mission of connection and helping spouses build their networks wherever they are. Um, we have 230 locations around the world. And even if spouses aren't able to access those locations in person, we do have a lot of digital programs and resources. And so that's what I want to talk about today. Um, so the USO's Pathfinder program is primarily um, a, a customized one-on-one -on -one service for military spouses to find resources and opportunities in the, in the communities that they're in and the communities that they're headed to. Um, so every spouse who participates in the Pathfinder program is paired with a Pathfinder scout who is a full-time USO employee um, and they work one-on-one -on -one with the spouse to develop a tailored action plan around these eight areas here. Um, the most common one that we get requests to work on are employment and education as you might imagine and so the spouse will the spouse will go through the scout and help um, work on resumes and cover letters they'll refine their linkedin profiles um, they'll practice interviews and they'll find great op job options for them whether that's in person in their new community or remote work or freelancing or maybe set, helping them set up a business of their own which is maybe where that legal comes in figuring out how you get the right licensure um, so far in 2019, the Pathfinder program has helped 1,400 military spouses create an action plan and achieve their personal and professional goals. Um, and if you aren't able to visit one of the 20 locations that has one of these in person, you can also download the USO mobile app from the App Store and you can create an action plan with the Scout on our app. So you can be anywhere in the world um, and get ahead of the game by getting plugged into the community that you're moving to before you move to it. So highly encourage you to walk through that. Um, I think sometimes the issue for spouses isn't that there aren't enough resources, but it's that there's too many and you don't know which ones are the right ones for you. So that's really where the Pathfinder program comes in, helping you sort um, through all of the many things that are out there and so many other great partner organizations out there who are supporting spouses. Um, so on this slide, I just wanted to cover really quickly some other programs we offer. First one being military spouse networking. Um, this program evolved in 2016 at several pilot locations and now spouses since 2016 have um, we've supported over 6,800 spouses um, at over 30 locations and next year we're supporting over 10,000 spouses at 45 locations so it's really taken off um, and at these events spouses um, attend a fun fast-paced networking session, speed networking um, where they're connected to their personal professional and community networks so we invite hiring employers as well as resources like the Chamber of Commerce to come in and talk about um, who's in the community um, and we'll practice an elevator pitch and spouses get two minutes with each person to just really rapid fire meet new people in their community um, and those are very popular and you can see where they're taking place at that link there. Um, the second one, I'm out of breath, I'm like so excited. Um, <laughs> so the second one um, is a pilot program we're doing Veterati calls the Male Spouse Squad, so shout out to Veterati. Um, the Male Spouse Squad is a digital on-demand platform that connects military spouses with impactful conversations with mentors. Um, mentors um, on the platform can be hiring employers or people who want to help with your career search, um, but it's also more holistic than that. So military spouses can seek um, new friends in the communities that they're heading to, um, as well as support with PCSing, parenting, whatever's on their mind. Um, and that's a brand new pilot program, so we're really looking for spouses to try that out and tell us what they think about it. Um, and that link for that program is right there as well. Um, last, we've got the USO Google IT Support Professional Certification, um, and that's offered in a partnership between the USO and Google. Um, it's a free digital eight-month program through Coursera where spouses complete training and labs, um, and I actually took it myself, um, completed it in about eight months, um, and at the end of it, you come away with a certificate that is accepted by many companies, um, including Google, as a valid certificate to um, start as an IT support professional at that company. So that's something we've got going as well if you go to uso.org slash Google. Um, and lastly, I wanna end my time by calling out a really important network that spouses should be aware of um, when they're thinking about employment. And the first of those is the Military Spouse Employment Partnership, MSEP. Um, the USO became a member of MSEP in 2017 and it's a group of over 360 organizations and companies that say that they support military spouses and are looking to hire them. Um, it's a really great list. Microsoft and Veterati are both on that list as well. Um, when I checked yesterday, the MSEP employment portal had 331,000 open job postings on it, which is 
crazy. Um, so I hope that really spouses really know about the MSEP portal and know that there are jobs on there that are specifically open to military spouses. Um, joining MSEP also opened the door for the USO to join the Spouse Ambassador Network, which is listed here. Um, it's a group of 23 like-minded organizations that are dedicated to raising awareness of military spouse education and employment opportunities. Um, and as you can see, Veterati is also on there. So we run in a lot of the same circles. Um, but I highly recommend it that um, spouses check out both of these groups. And if anyone wants to know more about what the USO is up to or anything else that I mentioned today, um, I can post my email address in the chat and I hope to hear from you. So thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Shanna. Um, I had no idea the USO did that. And I realized I didn't really fully introduce myself um, and people were joining when I kind of sped through it. So I am a former, um, I was an army officer for five years, uh, active duty. And uh, for the last three years, I've lived and worked in New York. And for the last uh, almost two now, I've been at Fairy God Boss where I'm head of SEO content. So um, while I was in the military, I had a lot of soldiers who had military spouses that I learned, tried to learn how to support. Um, I apparently didn't, didn't know enough. I had no idea that there were all these resources out there. And um, thank you again so much, all of you for sharing them. We're gonna get to uh, some questions. If anyone wants to um, chime in, there's actually a question uh, form you can post to, or you can do it to the chat either or. But I did wanna go back to Quinn because um, some people joined uh, after she had already um, introduced herself. And I just wanted to give you more time if you had anything excited uh, to talk about with Microsoft. So. Uh, Quinn, if you don't mind, just maybe uh, touching some some points again, uh, just for the people who came in a little late. Sure. So, <clears throat> again, my name is Quinn Kennedy, uh, project manager for the Military Spouse Technology Academy. Um, so, how this program came about is Microsoft um, saw the need in the military community for spouses. So they conducted research and found out that, you know, military spouses who are educated and have a desire to work, 56% uh, of them have a degree, uh, like a, an associate's or higher, and 66% are in the workforce and are seeking employment. But, you know, despite being a military spouse and having all these great credentials, 16% um, of military spouses are unemployed versus, you know, the civilian number, which is 4%. You know, we really work to drive that number down. And then other than underemployment, 38% um, of employed military spouses are underemployed, meaning that their skills and job levels do not match up. Um, and then as Nicole mentioned earlier, you know, the American military spouses and uh, overseas spouses who are about 690,000 typically move every two to three years. Um, and I've been to some military spouse listening sessions and, you know, the problem with moving so often is that you know, some of your certificates and licensing might not transfer to where you're going next. Um, it stunts your career growth because you always have to take a break and there's all these gaps in between your moves. So, you know, Microsoft saw the military spouse um, as a diverse talent pool and who are highly capable and adaptable to every situation and we're very resilient. So. Um, they created the Military Spouse Technology Academy, and the main objective is to assist military spouses to achieve meaningful employment in the technology sector, um, to create additional opportunities to make a positive impact on this demographic. And we work with technology leaders as well as nonprofits and organizations dedicated to understanding firsthand the unique challenges that this community faces and, and to support military spouses to find avenues that lead to meaningful careers as they move. So um, they saw a need for um, 
jobs in the technology industry. And that is definitely something that's portable. You can do it from anywhere in the world. Um, so a little bit more about the program. It's a 22 week in class training um, to prepare the military spouse students for a career in multiple learning paths. We have cloud application development, we have cybersecurity, we have um, server and cloud administration. Um, so we know that the military spouse's top priority is in training in the workplace and having that flexibility for family obligation because you know we're the backbone of the military families. So with that in mind, the MSTA classroom and lab times was specifically designed to account for all these things that uh, the military spouse has to do. Additionally, MSTA students also follow the military service calendars to allow for them to spend time with their service members and families, like having holiday breaks and such um, for families with small children. Um, so our partnerships, Microsoft's effort to support the military spouse is built on partnerships with training, hiring, recruiting partners um, to help the community obtain long-term careers in technology. Um, our content partner, New Horizon, does our technical training and it's a Microsoft curated curriculum um, and all the materials in this program are free to the military spouses. Um, we also partner with Veterati and Veterati provides us with a mentorship platform to use for our students. Um, a lot of the mentors on there are Microsoft full-time employees and they can provide, you know, real world hands-on experience and advice to our students. Um, and then a handful of our mentors are also uh, MSTA graduates, so they can provide, you know, encouragement and understanding of what our current students are going through. Um, aside from the technical training piece, our program also offers professional skill building. So we have Dana from Job Search Masterclass. She's amazing and she works with each of our students to help build their resume, you know, how to translate your current skills to match job qualifications, um, interviewing, and then also my favorite part of the program is being able to network, um, getting to know not only people from our nonprofit communities, but from other companies like Amazon and Google. You know, we, we see it as a, a bigger picture. It's not a vetting program into Microsoft at all, but we want to help create that network for the military spouse. Thank you so much, Quinn. Um, we do have some questions. So I'm going to start with, I believe it's Claire from uh, Cape Cod, asking about um, cover letters. Uh, she says, I have heard from different people to use, uh, to use one, um, but also that they're obsolete. Is the recommend recommendation to have one ready? Um, there is a lot of conflict over that. Um, does anyone have a burning urge to answer this? What do you, what do you think? Oh, Nicole. I'll go. I think that it's true that some part of the formality of the job search, especially now that's been digitized, may seem like it's obsolete, but I really encourage you to have something prepared for two reasons. One, in case it's needed. And two, I think it's never harmful to submit something even if it's digitized, because when they pick the words out of it, ultimately some some point it's going to end up in the hands of a person and any distinction that can give your resume a, a leg up is never harmful and especially if you've taken the time to make a cover letter um, unless it's absolutely not called for or not allowed um, I would have something prepared and even if you just have something drafted and tucked away and you can use it when you need it that's just all part of helping to solidify how you talk about yourself and you, you know how you want to be personally presented uh, excuse me, I totally agree. Um, so at, at Fairy God Boss, I've written about this. Uh, we, we, do, we write career content. We're the largest community for women. But the thing is, um, if the job posting says, like, submit cover letter and resume, 
do both. <laughs> Even if maybe on the, the whatever digital access like cover letter is um, optional, if the actual job description says to have one, have one. And also if the job has anything to do with communications like marketing or anything with communications as part of the job, people want to see that you can write and that you can communicate and tell your story. So I am a huge, I'm also on the editorial team, but I am a huge fan of the cover letter. Did anyone else want to speak to that or, uh, cause otherwise uh, I'll, I'll jump in real quick. Um, I just, I agree. It's great to have one ready, but definitely make sure you tailor it for each position. Um, I think for military spouses, a cover letter is a really awesome opportunity to explain what, what may appear to be an abnormal resume. Um, we have a girl on my team who is the best teammate in the world. And she came to the USO after three years of being stationed somewhere where she could not work. Um, but she led her FRG group and she managed a budget of several hundred thousand dollars and planned events for hundreds of people and did all of these things. But she said she was having issues because it just said FRG group under her volunteer ex experience. But her cover letter, she took the opportunity to explain what that meant and the leadership roles and the skills that she gained behind it. So I think that your cover letter is a great opportunity to expound on what's on your resume and help an employer who maybe isn't like the USO and knows what an FRG is to understand why that would be a valuable experience, even though it was technically a volunteer role. Um, so I would say use it to explain who you are and, and why your unique experience um, would be a benefit to the organization. Thank you. That is such a good point. It does, it does fill in the gaps in paint pictures, especially if there's a gap in time um, or your a return to work uh, uh, candidate. Um, the next question uh, from Yvonne. Um, my husband is retired from the military. However, I need a full-time position. Can I participate in these programs? So it's yes from us. It is. Okay. So, Come so on over. <laughs> mill, mill spouse, even when the, the spouse is retired is a yes for the paradigm switch. Um, it's also a yes from MSTA. So if you and if your career was affected by your spouse's time in the service, um, you qualified to apply for MSTA. So your spouse could be retired or a veteran, but as long as that, you know, military spouse lifestyle affected you, you are definitely able to apply for our program as well. Awesome. Um, so at the USO, our sweet spot is really the active duty, but with the Pathfinder program, we do support spouses and service members up to 12 months after they transition out and are finding their footing in the, military, um, in the civilian community, rather. Um, but we do recommend through MSEP, a lot of the employers that are there are um, actively hiring retired military spouses. And in that case, we would definitely refer you to some of the great partners on this call, too. Awesome. Uh, excellent. So that is a yes for most. And then um, another question. Uh, this one's from Sarah. Hello from the UK. Is this open to spouses of government employees stationed overseas, non-military, uh, and or spouses of wounded, wounded veterans? Excuse me. Let's start. Oh, thanks, Nicole. No worries. So, hi, we just actually moved from the UK, so I hope everything is going great over there. And uh, I will say that while our scholarship preference is given to active duty, um, everything is open to anybody and surely you should apply because it's only a preference. But if we have spots, we, we'd love to consider you. So I, I definitely appreciate that and, and encourage you to come in because anybody, even probably civilians, could get so much out of our programs and just really start their way on the digital career. So yeah, definitely come on over. And if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out. Um, for MSTA, there's two separate questions that I saw. So we are not open to spouses of government employees. Um, it's a military spouse specific training program, but if you were, you know, a spouse of a wounded veteran, I would consider that like a military spouse. So two different sides. Yeah, uh, yes on the wounded veteran, no on the government employee spouse. Thanks, Quinn. Uh, Shanna? Yeah, I'll, re I'll echo my, my previous answer there that we're, we're open to you up to 12, uh, 12 months past the transition 
period back out of back out of the service. Thank you. Um, I did want to ask each of you in turn, um, what what are some of the biggest challenges the military spouses um, have have had to deal with when when they're working with you? Something, uh, maybe it's a story, a certain highlight of someone um, finding you know what they found really useful about your program, uh, just to make it a little more personal to, so people listening can like put themselves in that, maybe in that person's shoes. Um, let's start with Nicole, if that's okay. Sure, I, I think there are some of the, the parts of our program that we've put as stop gaps to help people get into the right uh, frame of mind and really do the hard work, but there are some parts that the military spouse is never going to necessarily escape and and we have to learn to overcome those things and as a group of of military spouses we're doing that together in a community setting so it's really lovely to see all of us coming together to solve our own problems almost right um you know there are some things that are just not going to be predictable the, the pace of life all of a sudden our spouses get sent away um child care doesn't you know, uh, hold up for that day or someone gets sick. And we've seen time and time again, some roadblock pop up for somebody. And I think the really lovely thing though, is that this particular set of, of population is determined to overcome those things and doesn't let it them, uh, you know, be held back. So it, it's really a testament to the soft skills that military spouses have. And I don't think we own those enough. You know, we've all talked about a lot of the hard skills that we are trying to give to military spouses to help them gain employment, meaningful employment that they can keep. And um, that helps retention, sure. But the lifestyle that we live is really a tribute to the things that we're able to do and overcome on a daily basis. So don't sell yourself short on the fact that you are, you know, your household manager and you plan for the unknown every day. You're, you know, a resilient, adaptable, uh, resourceful person. And, and so while all of those things happening um, are surely roadblocks for you, you have so much inside of you to overcome them. And that's what all of our organizations are helping you to, to point out and find. Um, so that you can put that on on that you know cover letter or highlight it in your resume because it's really important that employers see you can handle that job uh, and what you don't know you'll find out very fast. So. Thank you. Um, thank you for giving that insight. Um, Shanna, would you want to address that at all? Just what you see the challenges are, um, what you've experienced. Yeah, so I, um, you know, just being a military spouse for six weeks, I'm still figuring it out. I don't even have an ID yet. So I'm still working on that, um, figuring out that process. But um, being 25 years old, I, I noticed that a lot of the themes that I see from military spouses that I meet are, come down to um, trying to find your identity beyond being a military spouse. Um, who am I? What am I passionate about? Especially when uh, military spouses are often following um, orders of where they're told to live and so it's where do I where do I find my color within those lines um, but that's also just really relatable to being a woman and being in your 20s or 30s um, so I think that a lot of times military spouses could relate um, or civilians could relate to military spouses in terms of those themes of finding your identity what do I want to be when I grow up even if I am grown up already and um, I think that's something that the civilian world could understand about military spouses is that um, they're on the same quest to find who they are as everyone else, um, but with a lot more challenges in the way and a lot more adaptability required. Um, I've also been really impressed with military spouses um, who have incredible volunteer roles um, and do so much for the communities, but don't think of it as job experience, which is crazy. I mentioned the FRG leader, but there are so many spouses who lead PTAs who are um, incredibly influential in their communities and they don't put it on their resume which to me is put write that down you know you are working hard and you are so smart and adaptable and any employer wants someone like that um, so I think it's just figuring out who you are and, and adapting and rolling with the punches and I'm excited to be a part of this life because spouses really inspire me thank you so much for that I think that is a really good point about it's just 
uh, the relationship dynamics of one, one person's career having certain requirements, whether it's location, whether it's timeline, um, a lot of us can relate to that, whether we're still active or we're a spouse or not, it's, it's such a delicate dance. Um, Quinn, did you want to jump in and share challenges you've uh, heard um, from military spouses? Yeah, so I would say from personal experience um, going through the MSTA program specifically, one of the biggest hurdles is making that career jump, right? Um, so not only does that impact like move to move, but like, you know, we're a technology training um, program. So a lot of the spouses don't have tech backgrounds. You know, they can use a computer and a, a mobile phone every day, but don't really understand kind of the jargon and technical aspect of our program. So going through that from like a blank slate was really hard. And it's, you know, a 22 week program. So it's a lot of information. Um, at Microsoft, we have an expression called, you know, learning from a fire hose because you're just getting so much information in such a little amount of time. But like I mentioned before, um, super resilient group of individuals um, and the military spouse community is very versatile and adaptive. So even though it was hard for me personally and my cohort mates in the beginning, at the end, you know, the camaraderie and the support that we gave each other made it all worthwhile. And, and that technical knowledge is portable. So that is a big part of it. Um, I would say the other challenges that I saw in the program was just scheduling, you know, like rearranging your day to go to class five days a week um, the, just that schedule change, it throws you off balance a little bit and takes some time to readjust. Um, but yeah. That's, thank you. Those are, those are really, um, practical and, and, and makes a lot of sense. I think a lot of people can identify for that. I know, um, when I transitioned, not being a military spouse, but transitioning as a veteran, it's just not being on the feeling like you're not on the same page with some of the jargon and everything else that is in the tech world or any different type of um, environment. But as I think everyone has spoken to, military spouses are adaptable and resilient. And those two traits really help carry you no matter work, what work condition, what career, what is going on. Um, and that's what employers are also looking for. Um, we had a couple, um, questions related to uh, like job listings. And one of them were, was uh, best resources for finding remote jobs. And uh, there was also a question about uh, the, three, the military spouse organization that had 300,000 job openings. Um, that was to Shanna, but she answered it uh, off of military one source. And she shared that, but I'm gonna also put it in the group chat. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll just jump in quickly about the remote jobs. Um, Daniel answered, uh, Daniel answered it uh, wonderfully. It's just also, um, you have to, finding any remote job, I think is the issue. It's finding, it's you have to figure out your specialty, like whether you want to, or if you have a career that you can transition to remote. Um, but Fairy God Boss, we have our career uh, community and our job boards have a ton of remote um, jobs. You just have to toggle to, location um but i i don't want to take up all of it do you have does anyone have any other recommendations for military spouses looking for remote work crickets <laughs> um nicole yeah um and so i think that there's been a lot of great resources talked about here and certainly there are a number of groups, um, both on Facebook and, and organizations that have different things. One of our partners, Instant Teams, that's exactly what they do. And I know uh, Shannon touched on them when she was talking about the partnerships. Um, they're wonderful and definitely go check them out. You create a profile and then they kind of match you into the role that they think you'll fit really well with. Um, anybody else want to share anything too? 
I know Daniel uh, put a little comment that was very true is to start the conversation with someone already doing a remote job to understand it better. Uh, and which you can do through Veterati. Um, I totally agree. Uh, I was lucky that my sister has, my sister who's a civilian, who's always been a civilian, had a remote job. And that's the only way I even knew that world was open. I was so used to <laughs> the regular working world. Um, and that was something that I needed to, just to see how things worked. Um, but I, I feel like, Dan Daniel, you wanna uh, speak to that? Yeah, I was just going to say, that's exactly right. I mean, it's really easy to get lost in the entire ecosystem of remote work because that has so many different definitions depending on uh, the context of the type of work, whether it's a telemarketing job or a UI, UX, like designer job, you know. So um, by talking directly with somebody who's already doing that, they can help you cut through some of the chaos. And then you can understand, like Nina was saying, what's kind of your niche and uh, your specialty that you can go remote with and provide, you know, and then you can build a portfolio of work or projects and make a uh, viable living and career and future with that. Yes. Um, and then we all, we have another question. Uh, this one's from Courtney. It says if a job listing says security clearance required, uh, but hers is expired, is it even worth applying for? Um, I can't, from some of the organizations, I know, I think that the fact that you were qualified for a security clearance, anyways, sometimes that helps. Um, but if they're looking for someone to hit the ground running, maybe it's a different story. I don't have enough uh, experience on the hiring side of that. Um, does anyone, does anyone else know or have to, oh, thank you, Daniel. If you speak yeah, to yeah, I spent five years in contract security industry. And um, you, you're absolutely right, you know, a lot of times if that's listed as a requirement on the job rack, the employer is looking to get up and running with somebody to put on a project fast mm -hmm. and not have the lag time of reinitiating the security clearance vetting process. So they, uh, in the majority of instances, are really looking for an active clearance. Got it. Yeah, thank you for clarifying that. Um, and then we do have uh, another question. Um, this is, oh, it's specific to Fairy God Boss if we have jobs for spouses overseas. Um, so I'm not, we are mostly US based. Most of our employer partners who post on our site, job listings on our site are based in the US, not all, but most. Um, so if, if you were looking for a job overseas, it would have to be remote um, in that context or, uh, yeah, I think the best bet would be remote, looking for remote listings. Um, we are just about at our time. Um, did anyone have any last uh, things they wanna say or leave our audience with before we sign off and wish everyone the best of luck with their career journey? All right, I think that's a wrap. So thank you all so much for joining us. Um, check out Veterati, check out the USO, check out the MISTA program, check out uh, Paradigm Shift and Fairy God Boss, the largest career community for women. Uh, we have, uh, it's for women and by women. So um, thank you and thank you guys so much. I just saw the messages. Uh, you guys were a wonderful audience and so many good questions and comments. So have a great rest of your Thursday. Awesome. Thanks so thank much, you very Nina. much, Nina. All right. Take care. Thank you.